Okay, on your calculator, there is a button right beside your left arrow that says STAT, and that stands for Everything Statistics. Okay, you've probably used this more in, in other contexts before, um, but we do want to put data in here, so under the Edit menu, we're just going to press Enter for Edit. Uh, put in the data for the unscented mask in uh, List 1, and for the scented mask in List 2, Now, usually in the past when you've done this, it's probably been because you were trying to do uh, a regression, you know, trying to um, write the equation of a line or something like that, and you needed to make sure that your um, list had the same number of data points in each list. You do not have to worry about that here, okay, because we're not... Uh, we're not putting these together, we're just putting them in as individuals here. Okay. Once you have your data in there, um, you need to quit, go to your home screen, go back to your stat menu, and go over to calc. Now this is where you found the regressions when you're writing the equation of a line or something like that. That's not what we want. What we want is the one variable stats. Okay, we want the one variable stat. So press enter, that's the very first option, one bar stat, bar stands for variable. Um, and we need to tell it which set of data we're talking about. So you need to press second and the number one. And that tells us to, or that tells the calculator to look in list one and do the statistics for um, that, um, for that set of data. Now, there are a few important things that we need here, okay? Um, I'll explain what all these things mean. We don't need all of them right here. But X bar represents the average of that set of data, okay? X bar is the average. Um, so you want to write that. I would write that down um, under the table or somewhere down on your paper, okay? So we can talk about the average. Uh, for that first set of data, it's 53.4. The next thing, it looks like a weird E. That's a sigma. Sigma stands for the sum. So what it's done is it's added up all the numbers in that list. So that's the sum of all the times. That's the total time. Uh, and then they square it. Sometimes that's it's helpful when it's other calculations. Um, the S stands for the standard deviation. We'll talk about standard deviation next week, um, but right now you don't really have to worry about that. And then the weird little O looking thing is a Greek letter. It's the Greek letter sigma, the lowercase sigma, um, and that is another standard deviation. You don't have to worry about that. N is how many data you have. If you scroll down, this is what we really want to look at though. Okay, because it asks for the summary statistics. When it asks for the summary statistics, it's talking about this. What's your minimum? What's your maximum? Um, Q1 and Q3, you'll see at the bottom of those problems, um, I have it described. Um, Q1 is the median of the lower half. Uh, Q3 is the median of the upper half. So what your calculator does is it lists your data in order from least greatest, cuts it in half, that's your median. In this case, 50.4. Um, and then for each half, it finds the median of the lower half, finds the median of the upper half. Um, those can be helpful. So uh, I need you to write down those five numbers. We also call that the five number summary. Okay, write down those five numbers for the unscented masks. And then once you get those written down, and it should be the same on your calculator as it is on my calculator unless I type something in wrong or you type something in wrong. I want you to do the same thing, stat, go over to calc, one variable stats, but this time press second two so that it does the statistics on list two.
Okay, still write down uh, the average as well. And then write down your five number summary. It also told us in part C to make plots. It's referring to box plots. Okay, um, so I'm not overly concerned about you being able to make, uh, draw a box plot by hand. Uh, I do want to show you how your calculator will do it. So you need to press second y equals, and that takes you to your stat plots. It's referring to the statistics. Okay, uh, for plot one, press enter. And you want to make sure that it's on, so press enter um, when you're on the on uh, section right there. For type, use your down arrow to go down to type. We don't want a scatter plot, okay? We want a box plot. Um, and we there are two of them on there. Uh, we actually want um, we want the, the first one, okay? We want the first one. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit more in detail. You have to use your right arrow to get down to it. If you use your down arrow, it goes to the next one. Um, then it asks for the list. We want that to come from list one. Um, and so we're good there. Now, we want to plot both of them. Okay, so we need to go back to second y equals and go to plot two. And we want to turn that one on and select the same box plot. Um, but we want that data to come from list 2. So under the X list, you need to press second 2 so that your data is coming from list 2. Now, before we can uh, press graph and expect to see it, we're going to have to fix our window. Okay, We're going to have to fix our window because it's not the way that it needs to be. Okay, Look at your minimum and maximum values. And that's part of the reason why we did the summary here. Um, you want the X min to be less uh, than your minimum value. Okay, The smallest minimum value was 32.8, so I'm going to go for 30. This is not an exact science, okay? Um, the maximum value was 82.8, so I'm going to go for 85 for the X max. You don't have to change the scale. You can if you want to. That's just how frequently does the calculator put a tick mark. I'm going to change it to 5. It's just an aesthetic kind of thing. Um, and I'm pretty sure we just need, uh, we need Y min to be 0 uh, and Y max to be 10. I may be wrong about that, but we'll check. Now press graph. Okay. And you can see um, the two box plots there. Now it may be a little difficult to figure out which one is which. I think if you press trace. Yeah, if you press trace, it'll jump up there to the top one, and you can see that it has L1 beside it. So that's our data from list one. Now, obviously, here it's pretty obvious because it's way more spread out if we look at our min and our max values. Okay? Um, so just judging by this, would you say there's a significant difference between the two um, treatment groups, the Senate versus the unsented? Okay, it looks like there's a pretty significant difference just looking at their box plots. Um, if we look at uh, part D, it says that from your summaries, you found that the people who wore the unscented mask took an average of 8.19 seconds longer. If we were to subtract those two averages, uh, it would take 8.19 uh, seconds longer for the unscented mask versus the scented mask people. Um, do you think that it really makes a difference? Do you really think that that eight second difference in the averages is because they were wearing a scented mask? Or, they're saying, or do you think that the difference is no more extreme than you would expect just by chance?
I don't know. That's the question that we're trying to answer. So let's see if there's something in statistics that will help us do that. Um, and there is. So what we're going to do is we are going to assume that the type of mask in problem three makes absolutely no difference in how long it takes uh, a person to complete the mazes. Um, question A says, why would you expect there to be a non-zero difference anyway in the mean times for the two treatments? We could talk about that for a while, um, but I would say that's probably because whatever mask you're wearing has no effect on your ability to complete that name so you wonder how long it takes. Um, let's look at question C. Let's look at question C. It says, suppose you're the researcher beginning this experiment and you need to pick seven of the 13 non-smokers to wear the unscented mask. So we are going to follow these steps right here. 